Now in the previous video, I showed you how to construct your own multi-directional hill shade by taking singular direction traditional hill shades and just stacking them up on top of each other with some semi-transparency. But guess what? There's a tool that already exists called multi-directional hill shade, and it looks like this. So here's the big stack of traditional hill shades that we did in the previous video to illustrate multi-directional hill shades. And like I said there, you have to turn off a couple of these in order to actually make some sense of it. Let's just run one of those directly. The result is very interesting, uh, somewhat high contrast rendering of the topography with n number of input hill or uh, sunlight directions included in the algorithm. And you can play with how this appears by doing a percent clip or min max or standard deviation. And I like to bump up the number of standard deviations. But you aren't in control about the colors of any of these specific hillshade directions. And now is when things can get pretty interesting. Now, why would you ever want to go back to the manual version of creating your own stacked up hillshades for your own custom multi-directional hillshade? Well, because it's kind of cool to do your own cooking, right? But also you get to do a little bit more because you've got more degrees of freedom. Instead of just applying a semi-transparent black gradient to these things, we can start playing with color. We can use hues to differentiate the different imaginary light sources of these and illuminate your features in colors that help the mind understand the actual topographic terrain of a place. And it's a lot of fun. For example, you could use a reddish color here, and you could transition to an orange, and then a yellow, and then some greens, and then maybe some blues in this direction. And you get a really chromatically interesting topographic effect. Here is a recap of each one of those hill shades that we made and its light source, just to illustrate the concept. Now we're gonna cherry pick a few of these and apply specific colors to them to create that cool effect. I'll start with this top-down light source, so zero degrees or 360 degrees light source. Point it straight down so the shadows are cast on the southern slopes of everything and the, the lighter areas are, the sunlit slopes would be the north, okay? And I'll open up the symbology panel for this. And instead of this black, semi-transparent black to fully transparent black color scheme, let's play with some hues. I'll choose this purple heart, interestingly named color, make it 60% transparent. And then I'll fade that out to the lightest, well, second lightest version of itself at 100% transparent. So you get this nice transition of this purplish sort of color it's nice and then I'll come back here and 315 degrees is a light source that comes from the um, near the northwest corner so up here in this corner and this color scheme we'll just bump it over a little bit along the, the spectrum Okay, so now it's starting to really come through. We're using hue to denote aspect. Aspect just means which direction a slope is facing. And overall darkness to show the shading and the topography of a place and hue to represent its aspect. So there you go. Give this a shot. Have fun with the colors that you're using. Um, try to make the colors touching each other on the color wheel progress through the color wheel. Try different combinations of colors 
Maybe you can come over here and give one of these a pop color in the other direction. The world is yours. Here's a quick trip around the color wheel to give you an idea for what different hues look like when applied to different angles of terrain hill shading. So have fun. Stay tuned for part three, where I talk about using hill shades at various scales all blended together. Happy mapping.